Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Ask Golf Nat channel. Today we're doing the Srixen. Srix, Srixen. Srix, Srix. So 5 Mark II driver, whatever you want to call it. Um, they do the low spin head in this as well, and they also do the ZX7. So this is the ZX5 is the highest launching, it's the most forgiving, it's the highest spinning, it's the most of everything. And when it comes to the seven, it's lower spinning, lower launching, less forgiving, more workable, whatever that means, you kind of get the idea. It kind of bleeds through. And then the LS is just basically exactly the same as the X5 within reason, just lower spin head. So the center of gravity is moved a little bit closer to the face for a slightly lower spin profile. This is a titanium driver. There is no carbon in this thing, but it is an ultra, ultra light titanium crown. It's got like a five star kind of weird mesh inside when it comes to frame to try and redistribute weight in different spots. And talking about the weight, there is an eight gram weight in the back of this thing, but this can be taken out and customized when it comes to your custom fit. And if you prefer a slightly heavier feel, you can get that weight customed. When it comes to the face, it is a variable thickness face. All companies make variable thickness face nowadays. Obviously the middle has been governed for quite some time. So it's a race now to try and make the outside as fast as possible, to try and make it as forgiving as possible. And remember when it comes to forgiveness, I will be doing my tests of this all around the face. And I'm also gonna hit it at a slightly slower swing speed as well. I'll do my normal test, but then swing it at a slightly more reasonable speed. When it comes to the um, face and the body, there's dual flex zones. Obviously the face is one flexing part. And then also they say there's a ring around here somewhere which flexes as well but there you go extra speed extra raw that's what we want so let's go get the simulator on let's go get on a ridiculous hole let's go see how the zx5 mark ii driver gets on Data set has now changed. We have it at the farms, hole nine, it's par five. It's 500 yards, we're off the back tees, and it's the most difficult fairway to hit ever. It's a bit of a dog leg left to right, and we're hitting across the fairway. So I don't expect at all to hit this fairway whatsoever. And we're hitting uphill as well. It says six feet on there, but that is from here to the pin, and it's a downhill second shot. So we're hitting definitely uphill. Right, let's go give this one a hit because I wanna go see how this ZX5 feels when struck. And if we can get somewhere close to the fairway, all the better. But I do like that matte look down by the golf ball. No shiny carbon on this one. Oh, at the bottom, an open face. I might get a cart path assist. See, this is an interesting one. Uh, that's 18.9 yards right. That is a bad shot. That's my fault, I would say yes, that is my fault. However, that's only 18.9 yards off. This is a very difficult hole. <laughs> um, it's fine, because you give yourself a decent angle in, that's no problem there, but uh, it's low on the uh, face. It's a titanium construction, so you do feel it. There is no dead uh, carbon-ness that we are used to at the moment. Um, it transitioned as time's gone on to be carbon-carbon. This is probably one of the last bastions of full-on titanium, but um, they've got that rebound frame on there. And what's the ball speed on that? 158 miles an hour, 1.44 efficiency, not bad for an eight mil low strike, but the face was open as well. So, um, that's my fault, not the golf clubs. But it definitely feels titanium, but it's punching out there quite well, considering. Let's see if we can get that face closed up a little bit. That's better. Slightly higher in the face, but a much better hit. Look at that distance coming off. Launching 15 and spinning a 2425. Yeah, so this is going to be a bit more of a spinny golf club. Where's that tee gone? Oh, back here. Um, this is gonna be a bit more of a spinny golf club. It will be. This is for the golfer, generally speaking, who um, swings it not at the same speed that I do. That's 109 as I warm up. 110's my normal. And so I'm gonna get definitely speed orientated spin. And so if you're swinging at 100 miles an hour, 95 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, or even less, that two five, considering that was high in the face and that would normally vertically gear lower, um, that's gonna suit 
a 90 mile now, 95, 100 miles an hour swing speed just perfectly. And what I will do as well, when it comes to doing the uh, collection of the information after this, I'll hit all over the face like I normally do to try and test out how forgiving this ZX5 really is. Bear in mind, this is the most forgiving model, um, but I'll also capture some information at lower swing speeds to see what happens when, how good this becomes when you start taking speed off. Because again, they make the ZX5, they make the ZX7, which I've still got to test. And of course, they, they also make the ZX5 LS, which is a low spin model, which would then suit me because I need that 400 RPM taken off. Right, let's go give it another hit and see if we can try and hit fairway again, because that's a miracle. <laughs> I was two yards offline, you'd take that all day long. Oh, it's off the bottom. That's my fault, but I might run out of fairway. Go on, bounce right. Oh, I ran out of fairway. Where's that tee gone? We don't know, we only got one dot data. There we go. That's my fault for pushing the tee, the ball, too far up in the window. Which I've done again. Let's go move back a little bit further. Right, what are we, uh, 33 yards in the air, 36.7 degrees percent angle. So it is coming in nice and shallow, but then it's only carrying 256 yards. Why? Well, we're 10 yards short on the carry anyway, because we're going uphill and also, I hit it low on the face. I could feel that I hit it low. That's why spins up at now near 2.9 and launch has also come down. You can see through vertical gearing, but it's done really well. That's 13 yards offline consider a strike. Again, 13 yards offline and have just missed the fairway. This is a tricky, tricky fairway, but then again, it is a par five. And so you do have another shot to get there. Let's give it another one. Off the bottom again, this time with the face open. <laughs> this is going to be really, uh, normally this would, most of these would be fairway. That would be fairway. Um, slightly across, slightly open, a slightly low heel strike. It's fine. But we're hitting uphill, so we're going to lose distance anyway. And we're spinning it too much. Look at that. Three, two from a low strike on the face. That's why it's launching 11.7 and spinning at 3.2, which is a lot. Of course, I'm now swinging at 112 miles an hour, 160 ball. And so we are now talking very much so into the speed oriented spin problem. And so yes, I would then go to the lower spin head just to try and keep that under control. I mean, I'm still hitting up by four degrees and it's not like I'm uh, displaying loads and loads of loft and hitting down. I am fairly good when it comes to the numbers delivered just a case of it's a spinny, spinny head because it's um, made for someone who swings slower and it's also made for forgiveness, which you add a little bit of spin to your head, it's gonna make it more stable. So that's what I can try and do to get that spin profile down. But then I'm going left a little bit, go on, kick off. But it's a decent hit. What's that, 17 yards offline, which really is not too bad a miss whatsoever. Not especially, that's, okay, carrying 274. It's going 38 yards in the air and 36 and a half degrees ascent angle. So that is coming in nice and shallow. So that's gonna chase down there if it didn't go in the rough. But that's 282 on quad here, that's 282. So I'm nearly losing 10 yards on that one uh, just because of the uphillness. And of course, if that had hit fairway rather than being on the most ridiculously difficult fairway ever, that would have run down there quite well. So that's two, three spin, and that's possibly the most ideal amount I can get this down to without artificially cranking it. This is at nine and a half degrees. So I'm trying to keep everything at nine and a half degrees. Yes, I can reduce the loft. If I reduce the loft, it will reduce the spin. But if I'm launching at 13 degrees, that's, I need to keep the launch and lower the spin. That's what the low spin is for. Right, one last one, because I'm pushing my luck. I haven't done too bad so far, but again, this is not the easiest thing to hit the fairway. It's a very, very small target. Oh, hand off. <laughs> that was a hand off. Has very low heel. It's a really forgiving driver. You see if, uh, well, we'll see what the numbers are. Um, yeah, three and a half thousand spin, low heel, as you can see, not very good. Face across, um, or path across, face open. That's just a miss. Now, if that would have been, that's 12 yards offline. So that is not miss. This is a ridiculously forgiving drive. It does want to hit target. It's just the fact that this target is really, really small. 
And that's my fault for selecting a, a uh, hole, which really you'd take three wood from. But yeah, three wood, I'll still get there to, in, with two three woods quite easy. So, um, right, one last one. Can't finish it with that one. Let's see if I can actually turn this one into a bit more of a bomber. Oh yeah, my bomb ball, my turning left ball. That's actually out of bounds there. Go on, kick that way. Yay, we win. 280 on quad. <laughs> I don't know what this will be. That's, that's definitely uphill. And 268, yeah. So again, I'm artificially closing the face. I'm reducing um, the spin profile of it. It's now 2.2, but that's the only way I can get it down like low enough to try and get to my 280 carries. Because this is a higher spin profile head and it's not gonna be good for me no with, with someone with speed it's that's why they make the zx5 low spin head this one is going to be for the golfer probably swings around 100 miles an hour or less depending on what their dynamics are and so what i'm going to do i'm going to go give this a test now i'm going to turn all this off go onto the range basically whack it a load of times out the middle yes but from all over the face, capture from how it works from different parts to see how forgiving it is. And also I'm gonna capture some low speed data as well to see for the low swing speed players, how well this ZX5 driver works. So I've done a load of shots now with the ZX5 Mark II. I've gained some interesting information on how it performs, how it behaves when you hit it from different spots. This is the highest MOA of the three when it comes to restrictions lineup. You've got the uh, ZX5 LS, which is the lowest spin option, and then you've got also the ZX7 as well. So this being the highest spin in, the highest launch in, the highest MOI driver, I've hit it at my speed and also at slower swing speeds as well, and also miss hits at different swing speeds. Let's go have a look at the averages for the Shrixion ZX5 and see how well it's done when it comes to its miss hits. Also, ball speed on average 157.3 miles an hour, launching at 14.6 degrees, total spin is 2,434, with peaking height at 41 yards and descending at 42.4 degrees. Now, yes, that's going up too high. Yes, that's descending too steeply. It's carrying 276, so not bad, really. I mean, it's just shy of less than 10 yards uh, short of what I'm normally doing. So it's actually done very, very well. It's just that it's going to be, for me, at my speed, too spinny, going to go too high, going to send descends to. I'm not going to get my one full carry and two, the rollout that I want on the other end because of ball dynamics. But that's because of the head is too spinny for me at my speed. And if you go by the clubhead speed there, it's 109.3. So there's a few averages of different speeds in there. So that's why it's brought the average slightly down. Efficiency is 1.44. Very, very good. Remember when it comes to efficiency, guys, 1.46 is really what you're gonna get from a camera-based system. You can have to go to a TrackMan, a radar-based system to get 1.5. That's because they measure things at different points. So 1.44 on average from a driver is very, very good, considering there's miss hits in there as well. Attack angle is 4.8 degrees up. Club path is slightly cross at 0.8 degree and face is slightly open at 0.8 degree. So it's like little tiny baby fades. Lie is eight degrees up though. So this is a uh, straight to slightly draw bias driver. See what you'll find is the fact that the lie angles are fractionally slightly higher up when it comes to um, the, the loft looking a bit further left. And then you've got the weighting at the back will try and assist in this slight, slight turning in the right direction, but, or the left direction, depending on if you're left or right, you know what I mean. Um, four mil toe, five mil high is the average strike. And I've got stand deviation on there as well. So if you want to, yeah, critique. There's, I've hit so many shots with the Zek 5. Um, they've got miss hits in there as well. So, right, let's go. Let's quickly have a look at the ball compare screen so you can actually see the flights. Again, I wouldn't really look too much at this dispersion ring on the basis of me hitting some miss hits in there. So they're going to be... It doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, right, let's go to the different swing speeds and forgiveness side of things. First one here is a decent heel hit what i would see most people hit as a accidental heel shot it's 12 mil hill, 5 mil high but the face is open by two degrees so as soon as you have your face open by any amount there's a slight deflection there no different to a footballer wanting to curve a football they'll do that with their foot going across the ball which then imparts spin you can't get the idea but as soon as you impart spin rather than hitting it like that you're hitting it with a glancing blow drops efficiency efficiency is 1.41 which actually is very good considering that's slightly healy and the face is slightly open. Uh, it's going 263, we're losing distance, yes we are. 
because of those factors. Um, you look at the next one, it's a slightly slower swing speed, but my face is now basically zero. So you get an understanding of how it works. Now, okay, the strike is 14 mil hull, six mil low, and that is decidingly a worse strike. Worse, much worse, whatever strike than the previous one. Um, as a general rule, and I say general rule, I mean basically uh, in every case, the low heel is the worst quadrant you can hit a golf club. Doesn't matter if it's a driver, an iron, a fairy wood, a putter, don't hit any golf club low heel quadrant. It just doesn't like it. But this is doing exceptionally well considering. Next one here, I've got a high toe. Well, say high toe, it's formula high three, uh, 13 mil toe. That again is a normalized miss hit that I would see every day that people hit. And um, face and path are very zero, zero, and efficiency is 1.45. That is just how good this uh, ZX5 is from marginal normal miss hits. The efficiency is crazy good considering that is not middle. Um, and 1.46 is a maximum really you're gonna get. Uh, it's going 279, 310, which is good. But the spin rate is coming down now. It's now 23 rather than 24 something. But I'm having to effectively use strike to vertically gear the golf ball down a little bit to try and gain some, like, you know, when it comes to my peak distance possible. Um, under normal conditions, though, for me, I would go for the low spin head, but it's doing exceptionally well. Next one here, we have um, 110 miles an hour clubbed speed. Efficiency is now 1.4, so we've got a little bit of a drop off, but it is 18 mil toe, 12 mil high, which is um, high toe, we'll call it. Now, Actually, the interesting part of it, it hasn't geared the backspin down uh, at all. It's launched much higher. Yes, it has, but it hasn't actually done much vertical gearing. Now, I've got one here at 108.8 miles an hour. Face is one degree open to a one degree, basically, across path, so it's not bad whatsoever. It's hit target, two and a half yards offline, good. And it's 17 mil high, four mil toe. Has dropped efficiency, yes, it has, because obviously 17 mil high is very high on the face. Um, but... 17 mil high is the point where I'm now starting to interact with the crown, not crown crack. We're not quite getting to a point where it's launching at ridiculous speeds and going vertical. Um, but it's gone up 20 or 20.3 degrees is launch angle now and it's spinning slightly high because it's interacting with the crown. That's what it's done. It's done really well. Drop distance, yes, we have. It's still straight as a straight thing at straight. 2.5 yards offline from that strike, it's doing very well. This um, ZX5 is quite an interesting beast. Now, I'll catch one here, 100 miles an hour. Zero, zero on the, on the strike. Bang on, spot on, perfect. Um, face is basically zero uh, to a path which is across. So yes, that's gone, finished 15 yards left. I'm not surprised whatsoever. Um, but it's, uh, it's done really well. 1.46 efficiency, there you go. That's about as much as you're gonna get from a zero, zero strike. It's going 252 yards carry and 280 total from a 100 miles an hour strike. Again, spin profile now is just over 2,000. So you can see by me hitting it where you want to, but me having the exact same golf club, I haven't changed the adjustments on it whatsoever. I've just hit it with a slightly slower swing speed, hit it out the middle, and instantly I'm dropping nearly 400 RPM from nine miles an hour difference. So if you then start thinking about getting this driver and then swinging at 90 miles an hour, you're gonna not have enough spin. So straight, and obviously, yes, you can just up the loft, and that's what you would do when it comes to these heads, you just add loft. But you can see there that because this is a higher spin profile head, if I'd have done the same thing with a low spin profile head to suit me, swing it 10 miles an hour slower, instantly it becomes non-functional. That ball would just fall out of the sky. No good to anyone whatsoever. So the fact that it's a higher spin baseline profile is actually very, very good for the amateur golfer. 94 miles an hour swing speed. That's me really coming down. Now, okay, I hit it slightly low heel, so it will gear up when it comes to its spin. And considering it was slightly low heel, it's not too far off the middle. It's 1.45 efficiency, so it's very, very good. Um, 230 yards carry from a 94 miles an hour swing. We take it all day long. It's an absolutely fine shot. And the fact that 
Again, if you start hitting this high toe though slightly, if you swap that four mil low, four mil, uh, seven mil heel to seven mil toe, four mil high, you are gonna get vertical gearing and that will then be a slightly lower spin profile than that. It will launch higher, yes it will. That's the great thing with this driver. It is very, very good. For, for me, when it comes to trying to get optimum numbers no i'd have to go to the low spin head that's the reason why they make different heads this is for the person who's going to need a spin profile which is relatively high say relatively high more more golfers than you think need much higher spin profiles than actually currently got the talk about when they say they spin the golf ball too much is massively so because of their own delivery dynamics how they swing it rather than the actual the, the profile of the head and so as soon as you change that person through coaching and through a better delivery, their requirements for a head, if they've gone for a low spin driver based on that, changes automatically straight away. And the fact that then they need to dump that driver and buy a new one. So this is why people need to sort their swings out absolutely definitely, but then make sure they buy the correct driver with the correct amount of adjustment. And this golf, golf club's got quite a bit of adjustment when it comes to that neck. Um, all different flat lies, twisted faces, um, high lofts, low lofts and stuff like that. It's a very, very good neck. Um, right, so when it comes to looks and the feel, that's subjective. Uh, it's a titanium head, so it makes a little bit more noise than obviously the carbon ones do. Love the stealthy looks. I love the map on the top, that's harping back to old, sort of my Ping G30 days when I had my Ping G30, which I hadn't a bad for a very, very long time. Um, I like it, and when it comes to its performance, it's not for me, but it still does an exceptionally good job of what it's designed to do. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, go on thumbs up. YouTube like so do I. Down there is a subscribe button. If you could do that, it's uh, free, and it's great for the channel. Next to it though is a bell icon, that's a notification bell. If you click that one, that will notify you next time I upload another video. Get commenting, what do you think of the ZX5 Mark II driver? Is it something that you're gonna test? Is it spin profile something that you think that you actually need? Or do you think you need to uh, fix your swing? Anything else like that, pop it in the comments below. So I hope you're well, and we'll see you again soon.